If you know we serve an awesome God, put your hands together and give our God an incredible praise. Hallelujah. Rock family, it's time for the Word of God. Get your Bible in your hand, your device in your hand. Stand to your feet. It's our custom. I know even if you're in your pajamas, even if you're in your living room, we stand in reverence to the Word of God. We stand when judges walk in. We stand in honor of our favorite athlete. So one of our customs of the Rock Church is to honor the Word of God. How many people came with the spirit of expectation this morning? No, no, keep it 100. Some of you all logged on out of routine, but is there anybody who logged on with desperation this morning? saying, I need a word from the Lord. We're in the midst of a series entitled Miracles, Mantles, and Momentum. And I believe this word is going to crystallize that thought. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 3. New Living Translation says, And Elisha said, Borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting each one aside when it is filled. Verse number five, so she did as she was told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her and she filled one after another. Soon, every container was full. I'm going to say it again for the people who are waking up. Soon, every container was full to the brim. I want to speak to you for the next few moments from the subject, don't stop till you get enough. Will you, will you operate under a Michael Jackson anointing for a moment and type in the chat, don't stop till you get enough. Don't stop till you get enough. You may be seated in God's house. With CNN, Fox, social media, and YouTube, we are constantly bombarded with ideologies and ideas. There is an unconscious war that is waging to gain access of your mind. The enemy wants to replace your imagination with his limitations. To that end, it is our mind that will determine if we are conformed or if we are transformed. What you perceive will be a direct indication of what you receive. I'm gonna say it again, I said what you perceive has a direct effect on what you receive. If you perceive your race to be a liability, it will be. But if you perceive your race to be an asset, it becomes an asset. If you perceive your gender to be a liability, it will be. But if you perceive your gender to be an asset, that's exactly what it will become. Let me pause and parenthetically insert here, uh, 2020 is the year of the woman. Uh, you missed what I just said. I said 2020 is the year of women. Do you realize that your most valuable resource to any business, to any infrastructure, it is often African-American women. You missed what I just said. Uh, 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 it's all determined based upon how you perceive it. What you perceive will determine what you receive. I believe it's a woman who was selected to be the vice presidential nominee. It was Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a woman who broke barriers for other women. If you are a woman in the chat, I need you to interrupt my cute little intro and type, I know that's right, yeah. Uh, 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 and here at The Rock, the men don't play or hate on the women, but we celebrate the women because we recognize that genders don't compete, they complement one another. Your history is not a liability. Your history can become an asset. I'm going to say that again. I wouldn't pastor with the style or the fervor I pastor with had I not went through the hell that I went through in my history. 
Uh, if, if all of my life would have been perfect, had I not experienced rejection, had I not gotten divorced, had I not gone through being suicidal, I don't think I would preach with the level of fervor, the level of reality. So don't hate on your history, but celebrate what you've gone through. God is using that to take you to your destiny. Uh, at the Rock Church, it's a place where your history collides with your destiny. Your economic status was not a liability, but it was an asset. Do I have anybody who knows what it's like to go to a refrigerator where there is nothing that matches? Thank you, Chris Tucker, where you got uh, peanut butter and no jelly. Yeah, yeah. Anybody know anything about bologna sandwiches where you fry them and you pop the hole in the skillet? Yeah, Deacon Eric just, just I heard a stomach growl. Y'all didn't hear it? All the way from here, I heard a stomach growl. Uh, what I'm suggesting to you, it's going through arduous times like that that gives you an appreciation for when you can walk into a five-star restaurant and say, it was the Lord who blessed me to get to where I am. No one can determine what I become. I was made in the image and the likeness of God. No one can determine what I can have. You missed what I just said. No one can determine who I can become because I'm made in the image and the likeness of God. No one can determine what I can have because the word says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask for whatever you will and I'll surely give it to you. Stop letting pessimists kill your optimism. Stop letting your fears suffocate your faith. Stop letting people who haven't done anything tell you you're doing too much. The devil is a liar. I won't rest until I reach my destiny. My chase for more of God will never cease. As the deer pants after the water brooks, my soul is thirsty. My drive to become better will never stop. Just because you're tired on six figures, I'm not going to stop till I get enough. Just because you're satisfied with an average marriage, I'm not going to stop until I get enough. Can I get 50 people to type in the chat, don't stop till you get enough. Uh, uh, let me give you some quick context so you can respect the content. We're in 2 Kings, and Elijah has been operating under the influence of the power of the Holy Spirit. Do I have anybody who knows you're inebriated and you're intoxicated by the Holy Spirit? Yeah, thank you, Jamie Foxx. Tell somebody, blame it on the alcohol. Yeah, uh, not, not the old wine, but I'm drunk off a of new wine. Yeah, is there anybody who doesn't know why you keep rising to the top? It's the Holy Spirit that has you coming out on top every single time. He's operating Watch me under a double portion of the anointing. Yeah, his predecessor, Elijah, was being raptured into heaven. The first Old Testament rapture, which is indicative of the New Testament rapture, when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. And the dead in Christ will arise first, and we who are alive and remain will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. Now, I can tell when I go to new school church, because you all only shout all off of blessings and paydays. But old school church, we shout off of the fact that I'm living to live again. Yeah. Old school shouts off of the fact that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Some glad morning, help me, when this life is over, I'm going to fly away. No more crying, no more tears. Anybody excited about heaven? Yeah. Uh, 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 watch me one day the text says a, a widow a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out and said hey my husband who serves you he's dead and and you know he feared the Lord but now a creditor has come threatening to take away my two sons as slaves watch what leaps out of the text is the fact that the man was spiritually responsible but he was financially irresponsible yeah, he, the text tells me that he's a husband, he's a father, he loves God, he submitted to his man of God, but watch me, he died in debt. Yeah, so in essence, this husband, he's blessed and broke. Uh, uh, his debt endangered his family. He was saved and sanctified, but still needed a GoFundMe for his funeral. Yeah, uh, how you got a Land Rover and a landlord? Uh, you, you missed me, you missed me uh, 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 for the price of your shoe habit. 
for the price of your gel manicure, for the price of your bundle of Brazilian virgin yaki number nine synthetic, for, for, for the price of that, you could have a life insurance policy that will set your family up for years to come. Uh, lean over and tell somebody, don't play yourself. Yeah, go ahead and tell them, don't play, don't play yourself. Yeah, if I die, anybody declare that if I die, me and my family, we gonna be good. Yeah, yeah, a wise man leaves an inheritance, watch me, for his children's children. Stop praying for a financial legacy and get an insurance policy. I, I, I lost the whole crowd. Did you catch me? I said, stop praying for a financial breakthrough and be one. Yeah, if you go down and take out an insurance policy, it'll guarantee that your children will not have to want for anything. We have to deal with the dichotomy that this man did some things well, but he also did some things poorly. You were often disappointed because you either deify or demonize. That's where your disappointment comes because you either make them angels or you make them the devil. You think they're either perfect and can do no wrong or you think that they're inherently flawed and can't do nothing right. Look at the Bible. God has a tendency of using imperfect people to accomplish his perfect will. Uh, I'm going to run that back because y'all not feeling me. Y'all are stuck up like y'all been saved your whole life. But I said when I study scripture, I discover that God has a tendency to use imperfect people to accomplish his perfect will. It, it, it's Abraham who is slowful and disobedient, but God still uses him to birth an entire nation. It's Elijah who is suicidal, but God still uses him to speak revival. It is Moses who has anger issues and a speech impediment, but God God still uses him to be the pastor over the children of Israel. It's Samson who has issues with women, but God still used him to accomplish his will. It's Rahab who was a harlot, but she still finds herself in the lineage of Jesus Christ. When you recognize that contradictions exist in all of us, it makes you less judgmental and more compassionate. Yeah, be very careful when you throw stones at people because there might be one day where people will discover that you live in a glass house. Yeah, there's contradictions that exist inside of all of us. Her husband died, watch this, but her faith didn't. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say her husband died, but her faith is still alive. Do I have anybody who has some stuff dying around you, but your faith is still alive? I, I got a word for you. Never lose your faith. Yeah, yeah. Lose your spouse, but don't lose your faith. Lose your home, but don't lose your faith. Lose your job, but don't lose your faith. Because you and your faith can get another house. You and your faith can get a better spouse. You and your faith can get a better job. Somebody tap in the comments. I lost some stuff, but I ain't lost my faith. Yeah, I was once young, but now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Do I have anybody who lost the a lot of stuff, but you ain't lost your faith. Point at somebody and tell them I got 99 problems, but my faith ain't one. Never lose your faith. You have to deal with the dichotomy. Stop making it either or because it's both. Did you hear what I just said? Stop making it either or. Stop making these, these all or nothing statements like 2020 is the worst year. No, it's not. This year you got closer to God than you've ever been before. This year, God turned down all the distractions. Last year, you said, God, if I can just get by myself and get in my word, that's all I need. This year, he shut the whole thing down and you still complaining. Last year, you said, God, if you would just get me away from these crazy people at this job, I'll be by myself and I'll be fine. Now you're by yourself and fine talking about, I don't know what to do. The devil is a liar. It's not either or, it's both. 2020 is difficult, but God is using this difficult year to help me reach my awesome destiny. What the devil meant for evil, God can turn it for my good. It ain't an obstacle, it's an opportunity. It's not a setback. It's a set up. Is there anybody here who will declare, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. The pandemic helped me become a better parent. The pandemic pushed me past my problem. Give God a praise in the midst of arduous times. 
uh, uh, be seated, be seated. We're almost done. Uh, uh, 2 Kings 4 and 2 says, uh, what can I do to help you? What can I do to help you, Elisha asked. Tell me, what do you have in your house? Uh, watch what her response is. I have nothing at all. Did she come to church? I just told her to stop making these all or nothing statements. Watch what she says. I have nothing at all except. All right. Uh, you slow, but you're worth waiting on. Uh, I know it's your first Sunday back at practice church, but, but let me help you. Uh, 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 be careful because there's some scriptures that don't need to be exegeted. They leap for themselves. She said, I ain't got nothing at all. Uh-huh. But then her face spoke up and said, except. Sometimes when you let your fear answer the question, your fear will speak the facts. Huh. But when you give the microphone to your faith, your faith will speak what's possible. She said, I have nothing at all except I got a word for you. God is going to take your accept and make you the exception. All right. That's as good as I got today. I got to get out of here. I said, God is about to take your accept and make you the exception. God says, all I need is a little bit. Yeah. He says, all I need is a little bit of faith and a faith the size of a mustard seed. It has the power to move mountains. What you got in your hand, Moses? All I got is a rod. All I need is a little bit because your little rod is going to open up a big red sea. Rahab, you ain't got nothing. All I got is a little rope. Your little rope is going to help them get free to redemption. Bartimaeus says, all I got is a holler. God said, all I need is your holler. A little woman said, all I got is a touch. God said, all I needed was you to touch the hem of my garment and I shall be whole. A little boy said, all I got is a two-piece and a biscuit. God said, all I need is your little bit. Little is much when you put it in the master's hand. Tell somebody I'm the exception. Uh, you know they ain't hiring, I'm the exception. You know they laying off, I'm the exception. You know everybody getting a divorce, I'm the exception. You know they not accepting nobody, I'm the exception. You know they not giving out raises, I'm the exception. Somebody type in the comments, I'm the exception. Give God a shout for being the exception. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. People online, please forgive us. We ain't had no hollering in a long time. People online, please forgive us. We ain't had no shouting since March. But if you had been through all the hell that I've been through, and God made you the exception, you can't help but lift up your hands. If the gunshots went off, but it didn't touch you, you can't help but give him praise, because you know I'm the exception. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, don't, don't, don't push me, Rock Church. I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. Be seated. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. The, the text says, the text, the text, the text. <laughs> for everybody who's online wondering why they're going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, they just got a flashback of when they didn't think they was going to make it. They just got a flashback of when they got laid off, but God said, I'm going to keep you in perfect peace because your mind is stayed on me. Somebody shout, I'm the exception. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, be seated. Be seated. For real, though, uh, the, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says, and Elisha said, here, here's, here's my shout. The Bible says, Elisha said, watch me, uh, borrow, borrow as many jars as you can. Yeah, watch this. Borrow the jars, watch me, from your friends. <laughs> Which intimates, if you ain't got no friends, you ain't got nowhere to borrow from. Borrow them from your friends. Watch me and your neighbor. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. How, how, come, how come church, they always be doing all that touch your neighbor? Uh, look at somebody telling them, you're going to need your neighbor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go color purple on your neighbor and type in the comments until you do right by me. Yeah, go ahead and let them know real quick. Yeah, ain't nothing you touch. Yes, thank you. Uh, 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 your, your network determines your net worth. I'm going to say it again. Your network determines your net worth. Your inability to network has you broke. Uh, I lean over and tell somebody, you too broke to be stuck up. Go ahead and tell them real quick. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Your bank account says you shouldn't be arrogant. <laughs> you missed what I just said. I said, your bank statement says that you shouldn't be arrogant. You, you need some friends. Yeah, yeah. Can I get some help, friends? How many of us have them? Friends. 
ones you can depend on. I, I'm, I'm getting a new church. I don't know where y'all came from. You need some friends. If she doesn't have a good relationship with her friends, then she has no one to borrow from and she can't receive a miracle. Your neighbors have something that you need. I'm going to say it again. Your neighbor has something that you need. Competition is overrated in this season. It's all about collaboration. Yeah. Uh, what has the Rock Church popping? It's that we got a network. You missed what I just said. Uh, what makes the Rock Church go hard in the paint? That whatever we need, we got it inside of our congregation. Yeah. Yeah. We got hairdressers. We got teachers. We got CEOs. What if I told you that pastor pulled a plug move? Yeah. One member said, pastor, I got laid off my job. I said, don't worry. God's about to do something. They didn't know that God was going to do something, but I was going to be Elisha. <laughs> I, 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 I was praying for a miracle, but I didn't know that I was about to be the miracle worker. You missed what I just said. Uh, uh, so, so because I knew this one person and knew their character, I could recommend them. Yeah, yeah. So, so I pulled my pastor card. I said, uh, I heard y'all are, are hiring over here at so-and-so. Uh, uh, do you think you could put my friend on? Uh, they said, uh, let, let me take care of that pastor. Long story short, after my friends got together, after my neighbors got together, the new person got a job that pays more than they owe job. Tell somebody you need a friend. Start smiling at people. Pull your mask down and smile for 30 seconds. Not now, but, but, but in, in the open air. Yeah, you need some friend. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. Boom, boom. And if you threw a party, stand up. Invited everyone you knew. <laughs> you would see the biggest gift would be from me. And the card attached would say, thank you for being. Da, 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 da. Y'all crazy. Give God praise for your friends. I miss church. Somebody type in the comments, I miss church. I miss church. Oh, God, I miss church. Oh, Lord, it feels so good to be in a regular church. Y'all be having me out there in the woods with the camera crew. Y'all be having me and Demondre and Josh out there at 3 in the morning. It'd be hot. It'd be cold some days. It'd be hot. I thank God for church. I was glad. I don't care about y'all. I was glad. When they said unto me, let us have this mini church. All I need is a mini church. You give me a little mini church. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. The text says, uh, uh, borrow some stuff from your friends. Watch me. The blessing's too big for you to carry by yourself. You lost me. What God's about to do for you, it's too big for you to carry alone. You're going to need some help carrying this next level. You're going to need some help carrying this next miracle. Yeah, you have to learn how to introduce yourself to other people. You have to learn that 93% of communication is body language, that, that you on your Facebook page is your brand. Yeah, that you're building a brand and you don't even know it. If all you do is complain in your posts, then no one's going to want to be around you. Stop saying the devil's all in my business. No, you posted it. He already had access to your business. You have to recognize that God, when he saves you, he does not save you to be spooky. Uh, you missed what I just said. Uh, you, you, when he doesn't save you to make you spooky. I'm the Bible says that you should be all the type of people. How come your anointing comes with the accent? Yeah, yeah. God says in this season, you can be anointed and regular. Yeah, the Holy Ghost don't make you exclusive. It makes you inclusive. Yeah, you can be anointed and regular. You can be anointed and wave at people. You can be anointed and watch the game. You can be anointed and hug people. You can be anointed and be kind towards people. The Bible says, then go into your house, watch me, and shut the door behind you. Uh -oh. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars uh -huh. and set each one aside when it is filled. Uh -huh. Verse number five, I'm going to lose the whole church. So she did as she was told. Yeah. Uh -huh. What if I told you there's a blessing in obedience? How much drama have you gotten yourself into because you didn't do what you was told? Yeah, she did what she was told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her, and she filled one after another. Soon, watch me, every container was full. And it wasn't just full, it was full to the brim. Last point, success is strategic. 
Uh, you want success to be haphazard and random, but success is precise and strategic. Number one, the strategy is go borrow jars and feel and set to the side. In this season, I don't want to hear no more ideas that don't have strategies. Yeah, I don't want to hear what you're dreaming of without hearing about the strategy that's going to accompany your dream. Uh, Pastor, I just want to be closer to God. How, Sway? How, what are you going to do to get closer to him? Yeah, that means I'm going to have to disconnect and unplug from some people, some places, and some things, and I'm going to have to be deliberate and intentional about my pursuit towards God. That means I'm going to have to log online on time on Sunday. Uh, uh, lean over and ask somebody, how are you late to online? Go ahead and ask them real quick. How are you late to online? I mean, come on. I mean, you can just turn it on and go cook your breakfast. How are you late to online? I have to log on on time online. Uh, number two, I have to fast on Tuesday because some of the stuff that I'm going through, it's not going to come by uh, meditation. No, but some stuff only comes by prayer and by fasting. Uh, uh, I don't know how to pray, but I didn't see you online on every first Friday when we had fervent Friday prayer. Stop saying you want to be close to God. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do to get what you got to get. Uh, I want my marriage to be better. Well, how, Sway? How are you going to get your marriage better? I'm not going to allow my pride to destroy my marriage. Uh -huh. When you get married, it's not about being being right, it's about being together. You missed it. Uh, some of you going to be right and be right by yourself. The devil is a liar. No, if I'm going to be successfully married, I have to love my spouse like Christ loved the church. That means I have to honor my husband like Sarah obeyed Abraham and called him Lord. If I want to be healthy, you can't just name and claim health. No, you have to jog and sit up health. Y'all missed what I just said. Uh, I'm believing God for a supernatural weight loss. You're going to be big and it's not going to happen. Amen. I, I had bad examples come into my mind, so I tried to clean it up. If you want a supernatural weight loss, then you're going to have to get a supernatural treadmill. And you're going to have to get a supernatural diet. I cannot, can I talk to somebody? Anybody had the pandemic 15 creep on you? Yeah. And I looked in the mirror and I said, the devil is a liar. I, I tried to rub oil on myself. I tried to name it and claim it. I blabbed it and grabbed it and nothing changed. But I made a decision over two months ago that every day come rain, sleet, or snow, you're going to go two miles walking and jogging. What if I told you I've lost 15 pounds because I didn't wait on God? Your boy looking slim. If I turn sideways, you're going to miss me. The devil is a liar. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I can't be sitting up here eating wings. Stop talking about, Lord, deliver me from this fat. No. You got to make a move. It requires a strategy. Tell somebody you got seven days. You got seven days to get a journal and write down your prayer request and put your strategy next to it. You missed what I just said. Your assignment is to write down your prayer request, the scripture that you're putting on top of your prayer request, and the strategy that works your scripture for your prayer request. You missed what I just said. God says if you put these three things together, a strategy, my word, and the Holy Spirit, nothing will be impossible for you. Faith the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain. The Bible says after they got a strategy, they were secluded. He said, shut the door. Yeah, God says, I do some of my best development in the dark. Uh, do I have any old school people who used to go to Thrifty? Do y'all know about Thrifty in the Bay Area? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm from South Central LA, and on, on Rodeo Road, uh, uh, we had a Thrifty, and they would take your negatives, yeah, and, and they would take them in a dark room, yeah, and when the negatives came back out, watch me, they came out double. You missed what I just said. I said they would take your negatives, mm -hmm, and they would put them in a dark room, yeah, but when they came out of the dark room, you came back with positives, and you came back with doubles. You missed what I said. God's gonna take your negative situation. He's gonna put you in a dark place but don't worry weeping may endure for a night but joy is coming in the morning and you're going to come out with double for all your trouble the bible says shut the door get away from distractions break your addiction to applause and affirmation yeah do, do the small things right yeah do good when nobody's watching you do good when nobody can see you what if I told you before now you wouldn't know that I go running every day because the Holy Spirit told me don't post it? Uh, yeah, yeah, if you do some stuff on the low, it'll tell for you. You missed what I just said. God says the Father that sees in secret will reward you openly. Tell somebody you got seven days.
You got seven days to get your strategy together. You got seven days to get your prayer together. You got seven days to put a word on top of it. After you get a strategy, after you get seclusion, God says, I'm about to give you a surplus. Let's have church today. The Bible says that she got jars and told them, bring me your jars. The problem is, is that you have something that God needs. She said, bring me your jars. Go get some jars and bring them to me. You aren't waiting on God. God is waiting on you. The Bible says that when they brought the jars, God says, I can feel it. The Bible says when they had the jars, that they began to pour the oil in inside the jar. Who got a jar and need me to fill it up? Yeah, they poured oil inside the jar. God says, I'm filling you up until you overflow. God says, I'm providing a new thing inside of you. Somebody give God a praise for your jars. Bring a jar for your joy. Bring a jar for your spirit. Bring a jar for your peace. Bring a jar for where you feel empty. Bring a jar for what's missing. Bring a jar for your self-esteem. Don't stop till you get enough. Don't stop until you walk into a new season. The text says, soon every container was full to the brim. Tell somebody, I'm not walking out until you get yours. Yeah, the Bible says every container was filled to the brim. Can I get somebody in person and online to give God a praise for your neighbor's overflow? God bless my neighbor. Let them overflow with love. Let them overflow with peace. Let them overflow with happiness. Soon every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. And her son yelled back, we ain't got no more. And the olive oil stopped flowing. Last point, don't frustrate the flow. As long as you got capacity, God says, I got oil. But when you run out of capacity, that's when the oil is going to stop. What if I told you there's another level inside of you, but you ain't brought the jar yet? What if I told you there's another degree inside of you, but you haven't brought the jar yet? There's a business inside of you. You haven't brought the jar yet. The oil don't run out. The jar did. Don't hate on me because you ran out of jars. <laughs> don't tell me I'm asking for too much because you got small jars. No, I'm believing God to fill up every jar in my life. I need him to fill up my marriage jar, my church jar, my ministry jar, my parenting jar, my mental stability jar, my health jar, my money jar. Tell somebody, don't stop till you get enough. Don't be mad at me because where you stopped, I kept going. Don't be mad at me because I have a different mindset where I'm believing God to use me to maximum capacity before I die. Don't be mad at me because I'm allergic to average and mediocrity. You got to hang around with people who got jars. Stop hanging out with people who have limited capacity. My children and my wife, they are tired of me because on the television, I keep replaying the Kobe Bryant, Kendrick Lamar commercial. Kobe said, just be better. He said, can you do that? Just be better. Better mother, better father, better sister, better shooter, better player. Is there anybody who has a jar for everything you want to be better in? The moment you became arrogant and thought you arrived is the moment when you ran out of jars. The moment when you stopped being a student and became a person who was driven by your ego was the moment when you ran out of jars. But as long as I'm breathing, as long as I have breath in my body, I'm saying, God, fill me up. I am empty. A broken spirit and a contrite heart, he will not turn away. Lift up your hands, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I come empty. God, in the name of Jesus, I come broken. God, in the name of Jesus, I am a broken vessel. I need you to take control of me.
God, have my heart, have my mind, have my soul, have my spirit. God, fill me up until I overflow. I want to run over. God, let my family live off of the overflow. God, I'm thirsty for you. I'm desperate for you. God, I need some oil. God, use my accept and make me the exception. God, I'm taking the limits off of you. I'm taking the limits off of you. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. I'm removing every restriction. I'm removing every limitation. Have your way in my heart. Have your way in my life. God, take control of me. Maximize this moment. Use me. You're coming soon. God, use me up. Use all of my creative capability. Use all of my cognitive capacity. Use me for your glory. Not my will, but your will will be done till I overflow God I'm empty God I'm empty I'm empty I, I want to run over for over. you Lord God I pray Lord that you will bless my family bless my ministry God bless our children bless every member that's connected to the rock church Lord don't let them stop until they get enough let every rock member run over in Jesus' name we pray. Give God the best praise you can give him. Tell somebody, don't stop till you get enough. Your enough might be smaller than my enough, but I, my enough is big. I, I'm not going to stop until every area in my life is in alignment. Tell somebody, I ain't stopping. I ain't stopping. I ain't stopping. If you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus, if you have not been filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit, I got good news for you. Today is your day. Next Sunday at 12 noon, we're doing our second, y'all missed me, our second contactless baptism at Solar Swim. Yeah, I don't know too many churches that are baptizing in the middle of the pandemic. What if I told you that God has anointed our church so crazy that we got people from other churches saying, can we bring people to your church to get them baptized because y'all figured it out. Yeah. Next Sunday, if you have not been born of the water and of the spirit, I'm not, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna keep it hundred. This isn't the gospel at gunpoint. Thank you, Bishop Noel Jones. But this is the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. If there's consternation or conflict on being baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, I can tell you that's not coming from God, that's coming from the enemy. He's trying to give you excuses to remain. He's trying to give you excuses not to bring your jar. But when you are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, he knows that old things are passed away and all things are become new. He knows that you rise walking in the newness of life. Text 925-233-0174. Text GROW to that number. Type in the comments, I want to be baptized. I want to be filled. When you come, we social distance. We bless you with a rock t-shirt and a face mask. I mean, I'm coming just to get the t-shirt in Jesus' name. Make sure, make sure that you have been baptized and all your sins are washed away. So when we make a mistake and we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us so that when heaven looks down, he doesn't see us, but he sees the blood of Jesus Christ that's applied to our lives. That is our prayer for you. I don't wanna be just a member of a church. I wanna be a member of the kingdom of God. To that end, if you need a church home, our arms are open wide. We are so elated how God is adding to our church daily such as should be saved. Uh, we just had two new members who joined our church and now they're singing on the praise and worship team. Brother Cameron and Sister Kanai. Sister Janae, Mark, I mean, the digital disciples, they come in here ready, willing, and able to advance the kingdom of God. Welcome home if you're joining our church this year in the middle of a pandemic. God is enlarging our territory. If you need prayer, yeah, please tell me you're not about to log off without getting prayer. 
Some stuff you need to touch and agree. We have trained ministers who are in a virtual prayer room right now waiting for you to click the link that's in the post right now on YouTube and Facebook. If you click this link, it will take you directly to a place where you can get face-to-face -face prayer. Don't make excuses, Rock Church. Make adjustments. Yeah, yeah. We will intercede with you and God will fill you with the Holy Spirit in the middle of the virtual prayer room. Lift up your hands, Father. Bless every Everybody who's joining our church more importantly bless everybody who's joining your kingdom God please cause us to overflow with baptisms next Sunday God anybody who wants to be filled with the Holy Spirit God let them know that it is a gift that has already been given we honor you for it in Jesus name we pray praise God in advance for every new member praise God for every new soul If you are just joining us and you didn't have an opportunity to give, this is your moment. Text TRCBA to 77977. Honor God with your tithe. Honor God with your offering. This afternoon at 12 o'clock, this afternoon, we are having our Rock Kids live. When I'm talking about the way our church has stepped up in a pandemic, the Lord knows my heart has a special place for Deacon Eric and Deaconess Teresa. They've been rocking with the church from the very early stages. And they said, Pastor, if you don't run out, we ain't going to run out. You missed what I just said. I said one week Deacon Eric was Samson and had long hair. The other week they had salt and... It's literally put their curriculum next to any church in the country and I'll stand by it. It is phenomenal. Meet us on the Zoom. We honor you. Give God praise for the Bernards. Rock family, let's rock the vote, literally. If you have not registered to vote, don't play yourself. If you, if you don't vote, you can't complain. This election is critical. Stop watching TV, stop posting, and register to vote. Your vote is your voice. So I need you to make that a happen. Make that, make that happen. Go and vote. I tell you in our church, I told you in our Rock Recharge, vote for the candidate you choose and pray for what they lack. What if I told you Jesus is too big to fit in one political party? So don't let the divide that's in the world infiltrate the kingdom of God. I'm going to vote for one candidate and then I'm going to pray for their deficiency. Do you understand me? Don't let nobody twist you telling you that one party is the Christian party. I see sin in both parties. So let that go. Vote for the candidate that most aligns with what you desire. See how nonpartisan your pastor is? And then pray for the other part in Jesus' name. All right, this Tuesday, we are dealing with rediscovering Jesus in the book of Matthew. How many people have been blessed by our Rock Recharge? We are methodically unpacking the life of Jesus Christ. If you miss Tuesday, you're missing half of what God has to say to you. And this coming Friday at 6 a.m., early in the morning will I seek you. We're going in our fervent Friday prayer this coming Friday, this Saturday, rock star training, 8 a.m., ministers meeting, 10 a.m., ministry workers and leaders. Last but not least, next Sunday, I need you to meet me. Next Sunday, we're partaking of the Lord's Supper. We're having communion. So this week, I need you to go to a healthy store. Uh, you ain't gonna find this at the liquor store, but go to a healthy store. All right, Deacon Whalen, you, you, this ain't gonna be by the honey buns and, and no, no, you're gonna have to go to the Whole Foods, amen, and, and, and get you unleavened bread and fruit of the vine, and we're gonna have communion virtually next week. God bless you today, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to practice in-person worship. God, let the same anointing that we feel here, let it be felt in every living room, every person streaming, every person watching. God, we're not going to stop until we get enough. Increase our capacity. Give us strategy and cause us to have surplus. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give God some praise. See you next week.
this coming Monday on September 28th, 9 o'clock East Coast time and 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Come rock with us. Pastor Chris, Lady Nikia, and the Rock Church will be live on the Word Network. It's about to be crazy. Join us for a night of excitement, empowerment, and encouragement. We can't wait to see you there. Let's go!